Hello, my name is Joe Hildreth and welcome to episode 6 of CNC for the Home Hobbyist. In this episode I want to very briefly discuss the effects of changing computer hardware when installing Linux CNC and the effect that it may have on the computer in relation to running Linux CNC. The purpose of this exercise is to demonstrate that a computer in one hardware configuration may not be able to run Linux CNC, but by making hardware change on the computer, you may be able to make that machine work for your application. Additionally, I will do an install of Linux CNC on a computer so that you can see just how simple the process really is. Now, please keep in mind that I'm not a machinist, engineer, or a teacher. I'm a home hobbyist that would like to share my experience with CNC machines for the home shop. Hopefully, over time I can present enough material to prevent new users from entering the hobby from falling into some of the pitfalls that I've encountered. So, with that out of the way, let's get started. Many home hobbyists have a shoestring budget in which they have to spend on their hobby, and I'm no exception. Because of this, most of us will not have spare money to go out and buy a purpose-built computer to run Linux CNC. So, as a result, we do like most industrious people and repurpose an old machine and see if we can bend it to our will. In my case, I have an old Dell Dimension 2400 computer laying about. This computer was built around 2004 and came preloaded with Windows XP. The computer is a dinosaur by all modern standard, but let's see if we can uh, make it work for our needs. This computer has the following specification. It has a Dell 0G1548 motherboard, an Intel Pentium 4 CPU clocked at 2.66 GHz, 2 GB of DDR memory, an onboard Intel 82845G GL video chip, and a Broadcam, or I'm sorry, a Broadcom uh, BCM4401 100 base T network card. So from this, you can see that this computer is really nothing special. It's a dinosaur. Recall from one of my earlier videos that the developers at Linux CNC do not recommend using an onboard video uh, on a computer if it shares memory with the processor. And as an additional side note, when I installed Linux CNC on this computer, I had to install in failsafe mode because Debian Wheezy, the underlying Linux operating system, choked on the Intel video when using the regular graphical installer. Once installed, however, it was able to use the video chip just fine. The question that has to be answered though is what was the result of using this configuration? After Linux CNC was installed, I ran the latency test. I was unable to run GLX Gears to put the system under strain, so instead I played a YouTube playlist while I compiled and installed different software while doing a large download at the same time just to stress the system. The result was a latency jitter of 62,831 nanoseconds. While this is a very small time, it makes the machine a poor candidate for software stepping. So what can we do? The onboard video is likely the culprit to the large jitter value that I experienced. So I dug through my box of junk and I found an NVIDIA GeForce 4 MX4000 video card. Now remember, the developers at Linux CNC recommend that you don't use proprietary drivers with either the NVIDIA or the ATI cards. Installing Linux CNC with this card though was much better. The graphics system seemed more responsive and I was able to install the system using the graphical installer. After installing Linux CNC on the system with the NVIDIA video card, I started the latency test and went to work trying to stress the machine. I ran two copies of GLX Gears, I ran the top program in command window, and watched some YouTube video. All of the strain I put on the system resulted in a maximum latency jitter of 57,301 nanoseconds. Even though this is still considered a high value for jitter, the machine could be used but with less than stellar performance using software stepping. While this was marginally better you know, than the last test, I, wonder if, I wondered if uh, we can do any better. After digging around my junk collection, I found another NVIDIA card, this time a GeForce 5200. Now, this is a better model than the last NVIDIA card I tried. Again, installing Linux CNC went well and I was able to use the graphic installer. Of course, there is no guarantee that the latency would be any better with this card than the last card I tried to use. 
it's generally accepted that if you have to buy a video add-on card it would be better to get something like a Matrox or a similar card and stay away from ATI and NVIDIA. But if you have these cards laying around it does no harm to test them out. Also keep in mind just because a particular video card will not play well on one system does not mean it will do the same on a different system. So how did the second NVIDIA card do? Well, after starting the latency test software, I loaded the system down by running two copies of GLX Gears. I ran the top program in a command window and played the entire Linux CNC for the Home Hobbyist playlist, and then I let the machine run for the next 17 hours. And the maximum latency jitter was 19,457 nanoseconds. This is a value that reflects a machine that will give good performance using software stepping. It is also the configuration I will use to demonstrate installing Linux CNC. The purpose of this exercise was to demonstrate that you do not have to have the latest and greatest hardware to run Linux CNC. If this 14 year old machine can do it, then I'm sure with a little digging, a computer can be found that can be used, even if you have to scrounge up a little extra hardware. So what is all this latency and jitter stuff I keep blathering about? Well, Latency can mean a few different things, but in a real-time system, it's the amount of time the computer takes to react to a given situation. Because the amount of time that the computer takes to respond can vary slightly from iteration to iteration, a method of measuring this time is needed. Jitter is the measure of the actual variation of time it takes for the computer to respond. For example, if we look at the clock signal graph on the left side of the screen, we see two graphs. The top is the ideal clock signal, and the bottom is what the clock is actually doing. To understand this, keep in mind that the graph on the bottom shows many iterations of the clock signal. But notice that the time the clock rises or falls can vary, you know, can vary slightly. The difference in time from ideal to actual is what we call jitter, and it is marked on the graph by the two arrows. Now I will discuss this topic further when I do a video on testing le uh, the Linux CNC controller for latency. Well, I've blathered long enough. Let's install Linux CNC on this Dell Dimension 2400. Okay guys, we're going to uh, go ahead and install Linux CNC onto this uh, Dell uh, Dimension 2400. If you look at the screen, you see that it's already installed. Um, if, if you uh, recall from the slides beforehand, I've done a number of tests. So we'll be blowing this away and this will be uh, a brand new install. So I have my Linux CNC 2.7 disk that we made in a prior video. And I'm going to put this in the machine. And we're going to reboot. Now I just do want to point out that uh, you know some machines have a boot menu, some don't. Some you have to go in the BIOS and those are uh, uh, those are questions that I'm willing to address um, in the comments. So, but anyway, on this one here, I'm going to restart the machine, and then when it restarts, I'm going to hit I think it's F12 for the boot menu. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to tell it to boot from the IDE CD ROM. Remember, this is an old machine. And this is pretty straightforward. So, here, this is the start menu of uh, the bootloader. And here you see we have the choice of running a live system uh, and a live fail safe system. Now, if you want to test a computer to see if uh, it will even run at all, these are probably two pretty good options to try. The next three options are in installation options. So you have a graphical, a textual, and a failsafe. Now, the graphical installation uh, obviously you know uses the graphics card and that sort of thing, uh, but so does the text. So if you have a, uh, uh, in my case where I had the was using the Intel onboard video chip, I was unable to uh, install either graphical or textual. So I had to do the failsafe, which I think uses the most generic type of uh, video driver that it can. So I'm going to select graphical and press enter on my keyboard. And uh, 
while this is installing, there's some long, slow parts. I'll just speed through that, that part of the video or that part of the installation so that it uh, doesn't take so long. So here we see the boot screen coming up and we have a series of questions that we need to answer. So I'm an English speaking person, so I'm going to select English. You can use the mouse if you want. So I'm gonna hit continue. And uh, my location is United States, so I'm gonna hit continue. And then the keyboard map that I'm gonna use is American English. So I'm gonna hit continue there. So it goes through and detects what hardware you have in your system. Uh, one additional note is the only difference between uh, what I tested and what I actually have assembled here is that I do have an additional parallel port card. We'll talk about parallel ports in another video. Um, and this monitor is touchscreen capable, uh, which I'm hoping to be able to use this uh, for some of the touchscreen GUI so that we can demonstrate those and how they work. Okay, at this uh, point it asks, you know, what do you want the uh, host name for the system to be? Now what's happened here is it's actually detected my other um, install. That's why it's automatically picked up uh, LC and C. And I'm going to I'm going to continue to use that uh, as the host name for Linux CNC. I'm going to hit continue. You can enter anything that you want in there. Uh, the domain, this picks up my home domain of Crazy Train. Uh, you could leave this blank uh, or you can put in your local domain if you actually have a domain uh, on your home network. So I'll hit continue here. So now it's asking for a user account. Now this is going to be the account that uh, will be used uh, generally instead of root privilege. Now if you're not familiar with Linux, root is like the administrator account uh, for Linux. So here I'm just going to use, uh, I'm going to use my name, Joe Pildreth. And I'm going to hit continue. Remember this is an account, this is a full name of the user here. So now it's asking for a username uh, for the account. I'm just going to put Joe H. And I'm going to hit continue. And so now it's uh, asking for a password. And, you know, if this was a normal computer that you're going to use day in, day out, you'd want a good, strong password here. Uh, but since this is a demonstration and will be used as a demonstration uh, CNC controller for, for throughout these videos, I'm just going to use a super simple password of CNC. And I'm going to repeat that password here, CNC. And I'm going to hit continue. So now it wants to know the time zone that you're in. I'm in the central time zone, so I'll hit continue. So now it's going to detect the disk that you have installed in your system. Okay, so now you have the choice of how you uh, want to install the, uh, the operating system, okay? So guided use entire disk means that it's going to take whatever that's on the hard disk drive and totally erase it, okay, and uh, replace it with uh, Debian uh, Win uh, Wheezy, okay. Uh, the use entire disk and set up an LVM, that's a logical volume manager. These typically you would set up for computers that you're setting up um, mass storage and that sort of thing here. And then this one here is you can use the entire disk and set up an encrypted logical volume manager. So we're really not interested in this and we don't want to delve into the manual stuff. So we're just going to tell it to use the entire disk and hit continue. So here it displays the disks that are available to use. Here you see I have one um, drive in here. It's a, it's a Seagate ST340014A 40 gigabyte drive. We don't need a lot of space, so that's perfect. I'm going to hit continue. So here it's informing us of the partitions that it's going to create. It's going to create a root partition and then a swap partition. And uh, the root partition means that this is where the operating system in Linux CNC is going to be installed. A swap partition is where it can swap data in and out from memory. So we're going to tell it to finish partitioning and write the changes to disk. And here it's warning us that, hey, if you do this, everything that, you, everything that was on there is going to be destroyed. Any data, programs, anything. So are, are you sure you want to do this? We're going to tell it yes and hit continue.
Okay, so now this part here is going to take a little while depending on the speed of the computer that you're using, um, the data throughput and that sort of stuff, but it's going to actually install the system to the disk. Now, one thing that I do want to point out, I uh, have done OS installs for video before, and normally I do it within a virtual machine, and I almost done this one that way so that I can do a screen capture and you can really see what's going on. So I'm trying this for the first time just using a video cam uh, camcorder to record the screen. We'll see how that turns out. You know, maybe it'll be okay, maybe it won't. But just uh, so you know, for further uh, videos, I will make some modifications uh, to this particular system so that I can do screencasts off of the system, which may or may not impact uh, Linux CNC. We'll just have to see. So um, we'll wait for this here and I'll speed through it when it's done. Now that the installation is complete, it will eject the CD-ROM uh, and ask you to restart the system. So I'm going to take the ROM out of the machine, and I'm going to hit, I'm going to click continue here to finish the installation, removing the live packages, and we'll re probably reboot the machine. Okay, here we can either hit enter or wait for it to time out. Okay, the system's fully installed and ready for us to log in. Here you see that it's uh, the host name here of LCNC. That's what we called it. The login, I told it was Joe H. I'll press enter, and then the password was CNC. So now the very first time you log in to the desktop, it wants to build um, something of a profile. And then it gives you a couple of options. For the options, I suggest just using the default configuration. And there you have it. A Linux CNC is installed. You'll see a balloon up here in the right hand corner. It says there are updates available. Uh, in the next video, we're going to take a tour of, uh, of the Linux CNC uh, software that's been installed on the computer. And we're going to uh, discuss how to do updates for both the operating system and Linux CNC. Uh, but this video um, is getting quite long uh, when you consider the amount of time with the slides. Uh, the record time so far has been about 21 minutes. Uh, some of that will be compressed down to uh, save you the pain of waiting. Uh, but I do want to say a couple things here. Again, I don't normally record video for an install or software install like this. So I will make changes so that we can actually do a screencast. The other thing that I want to mention is the microphone that I use for my camcorder, the wireless mic, uh, has some issues going on with it. But I have uh, ordered an, a new wireless mic they've not shipped it yet so hopefully uh, for the guys for those of you who watch my other videos um, uh, the stuff will get a little better here shortly so we're going to leave it there um, feel free to explore around the application menu shows you the installed stuff including uh, Linux CNC I would suggest that you come over here and maybe check out the Linux CNC documentation and uh, you know, read through that. There's uh, plenty of information here. Uh, you know, if you want to start uh, reading and looking uh, before uh, before the next video comes out. And again, I, I apologize. I know these videos take a little while to come out, but uh, I'm very very busy and kind of just trying to get them um, done as I have time to do them. So other than that, um, let's uh, let's finish up here um, to uh, shut down. I'm just going to close the documentation. We're going to hit this thing here. It looks like a little door. And I'm going to tell it to uh, shut down. So since I'm done with the computer. And uh, I'll uh, see you here back at the slides in just a second. So where do we go from here? Well, so far we've covered enough ground to get an idea of what CNC is, what a controller is, and getting the controller software and installing it. From here... We will need to test the newly installed system to see if it will work for a real-time system. So the next installment will discuss in more detail latency, jitter, 
and testing the system. As always, thank you for taking the time from your busy life to watch my videos. If the videos I produce help you, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. CNC is an exciting and rewarding addition to the home shop, and if you have friends who are thinking of dabbling in it, send them my way. Other than that, have a blessed day.